Welcome to that 1870s Homesteads, friends. My name's Rachel. So happy that you are here. Today we are starting seeds. Excited about that. And I was tempted to just tell you guys, and I may still, that um, you're just starting seeds with me because this is only my second year of trying to start my own starts. Uh, by starting seeds indoors. So I am by no means an expert, but I did have great success last year. So I already prepped my potting soil and all I did was, and it's not potting soil, sorry, seed starting mix. I bought some of that Jiffy's seed starting mix and poured hot boiling water over it to sterilize it. Sterilized my bucket from last year, my seed starting trays, everything's good to go. And honestly, that was probably two weeks ago because <laughs> life just got busy. So I am a little behind. It is, I think, March 3rd, March 3rd or March 4th. Um, so I am a little, a little behind, but that's okay. My last frost date, I'm in Michigan. And my last frost date per the, you know, average last frost date is April 28th. I will tell you the last couple of years, not true. Um, so I generally am starting my um, cold hardy crops right now. And I would have normally, if I had been on time, would have started these in like middle of February, but we're gonna see if we can't make it work out. And if we can't, I will gladly go support a local farmer's market and pick up some starts, but it is much cheaper to start your own seeds. Um, so because I had, did have success last year, I'm hoping I learned a few things and we're gonna get it going. So all I'm doing is um, not heavy packing by any means, um, but just filling my trays mostly full, giving it a nice, nice light little tap, uh, just to make sure we don't have any big air voids in there. And I'll share with you what I'm starting today. Hopefully you guys have already gotten ahead of me where you are and maybe you're a little behind me so you're just interested to see what other people are growing. Um, and I love our community so much. There's just always something to learn. Just put like warmish water in here just so the soil's not too, too cold. That way the lights don't have to do that much work. And then I have two peat pots for the loofahs. So we're just gonna do those gently watered. And whew, alrighty. Last year I completely, by the time it came to potting them up in my indoor space, I completely lost track of what everything was. So I just ran down to the basement and grab some of our plastic silverware, you know, that we have from parties and things like that. And I'm going to, these I can just save and reuse and reuse and reuse. And I'm just gonna write on the tip what it is that I'm, so I'm starting with celery. So there's my little knife plant marker. <laughs> and then I won't lose my spot. So I need, I know I need five celeries, so I'm gonna start with six. And then some of these are, I think they're all three cells, but I need to look at them if I can't see the dividers at the top and make sure I don't have any two cells in here. Okay. So let's, let's start three trays of three of celery hoping to get five, which would be nine. So we'll see how it goes. That works great. All right, in the celery, I am going to start. I didn't buy any new seeds. These seeds are a couple, this was from 2020. They are from in my gardener, uh, Utah. Tall celery. I have never ever in my life started celery myself. Last year was the first time I even grew it in my garden and I loved having it. What a wonderful producing plant. Um, 
tiny, tiny seeds. So I just have a chopstick and we are going to just draw a little tiny line in the middle of each cell and drop a few seeds in there and see if we can't get something to come up. Ooh, they're bitty, bitty, bitty. Geez, I wonder if this should just be scattered on top. They're so tiny. I think that's what I'm gonna do. So one thing to know about planting seeds, again, totally, I recommend you go watch somebody else, not me, <laughs> because I'm just learning. Um, but the things I have learned is celery, or seeds need three things to grow. They need light, they need the, the right temperature, and they need air. So, um, in order for, they don't need food though, oddly, to start because a seed in and it's, uh, of itself has all the food it needs to get going. Um, but that only works if you plant them at the right depth. If I was to plant these too deep, by the time they used all their food to sprout, um, they, uh, I'm just sprinkling some of this seed mixture on top to, or the soil mixture to just pat those seeds in. And uh, I was saying if they used all that food in order to sprout out of their little seed casings and they were too deep, they wouldn't have enough uh, energy left to push themselves all the way out. All right, so that celery's done. I guess I should know what celery seed looks like, right? It's just a culinary herb that I use all the time, but you don't think about it till you actually plant it yourself. All right. It's even tinier than lettuce seeds or um, carrot seeds, which are itty bitty. If you have any tips for any of us that are just trying to grow celery ourselves for the first time, leave it in the comments below. Todd got my grow lights all set up during the week. So I am ready, ready. These are one of those things I'm gonna to have to look at what's the right temperature for them to sprout because I don't know if I should even put them in my grow tent or just have them straight out in the cool dining room. I do not have heat mats. If that's something that you're interested in, I'll show you my setup when it comes time to go put these in there. I have a very low maintenance setup. Okay, celery's done. Let's move on to our cabbages. I have stonehead cabbage and I have red acre cabbage. Last year, my cabbage died, starting trying to start it from seed for the first time. So um, I think I'm gonna do something different this year. I'm not gonna bother with the, the dome lids and I'm not gonna put them in my grow tents. That's the two things I'm doing differently. And I think I'm growing about eight of each. So I'm gonna do one row of green and one row of red. I would rather have too much and be able to gift some starts away than not have enough. So I always start extra just in case. So these get planted about a quarter inch deep the seed packet says. Really pay attention to that because it definitely does matter. And my green stonehead cabbage. We are affiliates with Haas Tools. So if you haven't gotten your seeds yet and you wanna use our discount code, it's not really a discount code, you just get a free packet of seeds. Um, and it's my favorite seed, the Mr. Big P. So I'm putting three in each just to make sure um, we get our germination that we're looking for, which I've had wonderful success with Haas and their germination rates. So my hope is um, I'm gonna have to trim a couple of these back so that we just have one per cell. All right. Done with green cabbage. Let's move on to our red acre cabbage. My favorite thing. It's so fun to think about, you know, 
this summer I'm going to be harvesting this potentially fingers crossed pray to Jesus and that we will be making some of our pickled spice cabbage and my coleslaw mix so exciting all right similarly I'm just going to make a little quarter inch indent line so I can just drop my seeds in there and If you guys are just brand new seed starters, let me tell you who I recommend you go watch. Who did I learn from? My all time favorite, so much good knowledge and content for seed starting is the Rusted Garden. Gary, um, I'm not gonna pronounce his name right. I know if I try his last name, Pilar Pilaric maybe, he, is just a phenomenal and the most patient teacher. And he has tons of um, kind of like various options too. So you can use what works for you based off what you have. Um, but he is my favorite seed starting teacher. Other people that I recommend um, also bouncing ideas off of in getting good knowledge is um, Chelsea over at Little Mountain Ranch. She grows a massive garden every year and starts all of her own seeds. She um, and she is dependent on her garden to grow for her food for a very large family. So um, she takes it very seriously and um, she has a lot of great content on uh, making your own soil mix, making your own paper pots, um, how to grow in greenhouses. Um, so just again, another awesome resource. And then um, in my gardener. So in my gardener is a great resource to learn to start seeds from. And again, he has lots of different options. I think this year on his channel for the first time, he's showing even how to do winter sowing, which is a very um, fun method. I've tried that here and um, I just found that it left me with not, not as hardy of a, not even hardy really. My starts were just not as far along as I would have wanted them to by the time it came time to put them in the garden. Um, and I'm sure that was my fault, just something I didn't do quite right, but all right. That is the red acre cabbage. I just need to make my labels so I don't forget. That was a fun idea, huh, to grab the knives? I'm sure you guys have thought of that before. Okay, red cabbage. Okay, so for broccoli, I've got from Haas Green Magic Broccoli. And broccoli is something that I struggle with growing, just getting the timing right so it doesn't bolt on me before I get ahead of broccoli. Um, so I'm hoping that by starting them myself this year, getting a good head start, I'll still have long enough of, or cool enough of a season long enough that um, they won't bolt on me. So we'll try it. Like I'm gonna do the same thing, just drop a few seeds in each cell, hoping to get that germination again that I'm looking for. I thought it was gonna be 60 degrees out today and I was gonna to get to do this outside, but that's tomorrow and we've got other, other plans for tomorrow. So we're just gonna pretend it's still winter and it's not spring out yet and just get this done. All right, broccoli is all done. Okay, let's make our broccoli labels. And then that is my first, my first plantings of this garden season. That's so exciting. Well, outside of the sweet potato slips. So that's super fun and we are off to the races. The next flat is going to be all spinach, and then we're going to start some loofah gourds. Okay, similarly, I am going to be planting um, my spinach, 
and they need to go one inch or half an inch to one inch deep. So a little bit deeper. So, um, and similarly to broccoli, that's what I started to say. I have struggled um, getting a really nice harvest of spinach before um, the heat of summer comes and it just turns bitter on you. So I'm hoping, this was a tip I learned from actually in my gardener that for here in our zone, because we have such a short, short spring, you know, I'm sure a lot of people say it, but it's so true here in Michigan that it kind of feels like a lot of times you just go straight from winter to fall or winter to summer. And um, one thing to, that we can do to get around that is starting a lot of our spring crops indoors. So I would have never, you know, most leafy greens, I don't have the same problem with lettuce, but I sure do with spinach. Um, and I am going to be planting a lot of this in my green stalks. Um, so spinach is something, all of these crops are cold hardy and I'll be planting those out uh, before the last frost date. I'm not gonna bore you guys with this too much. I'm just dropping again, three to four seeds in each cell and um, get getting that germination. Now when these pop up, I'll probably leave two in each cell because I do high intensity planting with my spinach um, because I prefer a baby spinach leaf over a mature spinach leaf. So, and maybe it'll allow us to do some quick cut and come again on our spinach. Now this brand I'm growing is Livingston. This is an heirloom variety called Spinach America. Um, and I buy these seeds from Family Farm and Home. Hello. How's it going, baby? Good. Look at my labels this year. <laughs> <laughs> Very cute. Mm. Remember oh. how I lost track of everything last year? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that works. Yeah, it does. Just out in the backyard and a bee just flew and landed oh. right on my arm. Oh, nice. I wondered if it was one of ours. He's probably saying feed me. I might go back out there and check on him. Yeah. And again, any tips you guys have, please leave them in the comments below. We all learn from each other. So what is your go-to secret tip on getting that big spinach harvest? I know I want to know. Everybody wants to know. So, um, all right, all my seeds are in. Do a light sweep of the damp soil over it and then we will come back and put a little bit of our um, fresh seeding mix on top and then all we have left to do is our loofahs um, actually i think i should start my hibiscus too and thank you for telling me how big they get i've never grown one and people were like oh rachel i don't think you want to put that in your garden because they get like five feet which, and I think I'm already kind of late, honestly, to start those, but we'll try, we'll see. And then maybe I'll just plant it up here by the house in the, in the tea garden area. All right. Okay, this is all, all spinach. So I just need one label to remind myself that this whole tray is spinach. I will, re I think I should remember that. So this is all spinach. Now let's go grab those peat pots and we will start our loofahs and I'll make a couple more and we'll get the hibiscus going too. All right, the peat pots are nice and soaked and ready for planting. So loofah, let me tell you about loofah. I don't know much. I've grown it successfully once, not even successfully. I've gotten it to grow once. It got to September when I first found blooms and then frost was right around the corner. So there was just no time. Um, so these say that they're 55 to 70 days to maturity. No way, Jose. Um, 
I'm going to plant. Now these are quite larger seeds, so I'm gonna put those down there pretty good, an uh, inch and a half or so. And I'm starting them in bigger pods because uh, I know I'll be transplanting this up into a much larger pod to plant out in the garden. So um, now these I will put in my grow tent because they need warm conditions. Um, so I'll show you that set up here real shortly. So I'm starting four. Um, you know what, let's just go ahead and put two seeds in both just in case for our cross your fingers, good wishes for getting a couple loofahs to grow. And I believe my daughter-in-law is trying these down in Charleston as well. And I was like, oh, I bet you're gonna do great down there um, because they have a, a long enough season. So this will be fun to add to, um, you know, create, have my own scrubbies and then also put them in some, I haven't made soap in a couple of years just because I haven't needed to, um, but the next round of soap, I wanna put some loofah sponges inside the soap. So I think that that would be fun. Okay, I know this lighting is terrible, but that's just what these grow lights do behind me. But this is the spinach and the broccoli cabbages and all of that. It, they like cooler temperature around 50 to get germinated, 50 to 70, I would say. So they don't need like super warm temps. That's room temperature here. So you don't need heat mats and things like that. So they're just gonna sit on the lights. I probably need to lower the lights. Um, and now let's move on over to the grow station. All right, and this is my little TSC grow tent that I got. Um, I've had it for years. We've moved our sweet potatoes in here, um, and these are what I just planted, the loofah and the hibiscus. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop this. And this is sitting right over a heat register. So it keeps it really nice and warm in here, but it does dry it out a little bit faster. So you just have to check on the water a little bit more frequently, but that's a quick way that I can get heat in my grow tent without having to have heat mats. And it worked great last year. So my, oh, let me take you guys to better lighting. Ooh. There we go. My seed starting journey for 2022 garden season is started and ready. And I will see you guys on the next video. Thanks for coming along with me and happy growing where you are. Bye guys.